Hi guys, this is Paul with Tweak Town. We're here at Flash Memory Summit 2014. Right now we're sitting down with Saul Zales. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Contour Semiconductor. And you've come a long way and you brought along an interesting little wafer here, which we always like to see wafers. Can you give us a little bit of an idea of just exactly what your product is? Sure. Uh, Contour Semiconductor is developing a phase change based memory in a new innovative way. Fundamentally, what we've addressed is the cost structure. It's a 15 mass process relative to common industry 36 to 40, and that inherently brings down the cost 65%. Fewer steps, fewer mass, less depreciation. Beyond that, everyone else who's done phase change has said, make it a RAM type interface, make it a God process, unified, all that. We said, wait a minute, the industry has evolved. There's $25 billion industry backed by an ecosystem of controllers. Do a NAND interface. With a NAND interface, you could get a new technology to market faster because you could have bad blocks, you could have a corrector, and that allows you to strip from the memory a lot of the CMOS complexity that doesn't generate bits because a controller does that better than a memory technology can. So can you explain a little bit of what we're actually seeing here on the surface of the die? Sure, so this is our first four gigabit wafers coming off the line three, four days ago. On this wafer, you can see a different pattern. One of it's a test chip that allows us to uh, build knowledge and experience it with every wafer I run on. It's a diode and a transistor and how it all works together through the test chip. We also have four gigabit chips that allow me to debug the low cost periphery. And it's about the low cost periphery that allows me to get to this 15 mask layer type process. So we've heard a lot about PCM and some of these new emerging alternatives to, for non-volatile memory technologies. Can you kind of give our, our viewers a sense of what kind of advantages this brings to the table in comparison to NAND, for instance? Sure. So the big thing with NAND, and it's evolved over time, it's a large block, large page, page erase memory. It was built around the structure of disk drives, storage elements. As you get to hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes, you have a problem. Your block sizes are big. You have to deal with moving around your file structures, and you have to deal with uh, cycle management, uh, write amplification, these type of things. Phase change memory, half a billion cycles. It's also byte and word alterable. So when you think about the application design, you could say, wait a minute, so I can do better file structures because I my pointers change. I could do better meta tables of what's where and how. And I could do better caching layers because I don't have to deal with these large blocks. I could get down to byte and word granularity uh, faster to, to write and erase, and that gives me an advantage in my system architecture. So I augment what NAND does better and I'm not looking to replace them, I'm looking to build a better system with my technology. Excellent, and where and how is this product created? Where are you guys fabbing right now? We're fabbing, this is a 52 nanometer process technology. It's a proof of, of technology capability demonstration vehicle in Micron Zagrate fab. Uh, this fab has been proven to be able to bring a lot of technologies uh, to bear over the last 30 or 40 years. The, it's a great group of people. Uh, next gen will clearly go on to 300 millimeter, a bigger density, a bigger wafers, bigger capabilities. Why do you feel right now there's kind of this, I'm, I'm sure you feel there's kind of a ripe environment as people are looking to move beyond NAND or complementary technologies. Why do you feel that that situation is presenting itself? We're living in a beautiful age of the memory manu manufacturer. Demand is growing. SSDs are kicking in. Everyone wants them. The rock is NAND of the last 28 years, which was a planar architecture and you shrink it lithographically, has come to an end. No one's going to put the capital into another planar NAND. So that stopped. Now the focus is on 3D NAND. But think about a guy who builds a development of single story houses has to learn how to build apartment buildings. It's different technology, different fab structure. So the capital will go into 3D, but 3D is not really cost efficient yet. So there's demand growth, capex stall, and that creates legacy applications that aren't getting served. And with our technology, we can come in with a lower cost wafer, address some of these, augment what NAND can do, and it's a really great time to enter an industry. That sounds good. A lot of bringing new products like this that are very disruptive is a lot of that kind of hinges on 
the people involved in the experience. What kind of experience do you have that you feel enables your company to have an advantage over other upstarts in this area? As a company, we have a lot of great people. Part of my background is I built the first SSD in 86 and first digital camera for Kodak in 87 at Intel. I was part of Intel's flash effort, growing it to a $650 million product under Grove when Grove was shooting everything memory. So I grew up in the crucible of deliver or die. So come from Intel, but I have a better vision of the realities of design wins and time to market. Add to that, I formed Intel's SSD and IMFT strategies. I then formed a spin-out, became Mnemonics and Micron. I have relationships around the industry, and my team is really strong. I have a guy named Tom Trent, was employee number six at Micron. In the age when developing a memory was a hard problem and everything was a new thing you solved, you didn't just take yesterdays, you created, again, I have advisors, consultants that are also equally great. I have a guy on the team who was part of Intel's phase change program from the beginning. I have a guy who's been around the NAND industry for the last 15 years in a consumer space. I was at Fusion IO. I have the enterprise view of things. We have a small group of guys, a lot of experience, and we look at it from a realistic perspective of how do you take something and get it into the market. Well, it sounds exciting, and I can tell you you have the drive and definitely the motivation to do it. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on you guys. Thanks for I appreciate it. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Yep.